In 1923, a small black Florida town named Rosewood was erased from the map, fueled by a white woman's lie that she had been raped by a black stranger. An angry white lynch mob swept into Rosewood and burned it to the ground. For over 60 years, the survivors kept their story secret, that is, until now. Director John Singleton, known for his work on Boys in the Hood and Poetic Justice, recounts the four-day massacre in the new film, Rosewood, and I am pleased to have him back on this program, sitting at this table. Welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, tell me first how you feel about this film, about making this film, about this story. What's in, inside of John Singleton that connects here with this story? I am so, um, I'm, I'm proudest of this film out of any film I've made so far. You know, um, I look at the pictures that I've made and I think personally they represent different stages in my life. You know, my first film was my entry level um, into the business and the film industry. You know, the other two films were making my way towards this film, you know. Um, and this film for me, I think is my most mature work. I think that the experience of making this film is, has, in a way, transformed me as a man and as a filmmaker. Um, Stop there. How has it transformed you as a man? It's transformed me as a man because I went down south with so many, you know, you know, prejudices of what I thought it was going to be to be, to be a black man working down south. With, uh, I mean, the south that we went to was the real south. Not, you know, this is like. Central Florida, you know, mm -hmm. so we're talking about people who are not even used to movie crews at all, and we shot in a swamp. But I had, you know, like, you know, me in the swamp shooting um, a movie about an incident, a, a, a very deep, strong racial incident that had been suppressed for many years with people who were one or two generations away from the people who had done this. So I had a tremendous amount of trepidation in, in, in going into it about the challenges of what that would be. And I think that, you know, in the, in the process of making this film, I surmounted those challenges, and it's made me a better, better, better man. And I think it's, a, it's, it's given me a kind of like a patriotic fervor in a sense, you know, because um, the, the, the filmmakers that I really admire, you know, the old American filmmakers like Wells and John Huston and, you know. John Ford, people like John that. John Ford, you know, they, they were they were Americans in the sense that they they saw challenges and they mountains and they climbed them and they surmounted them and boom you know if they wanted John Houston if he wanted to do if he wanted to go hunting he'd go to Af write a script and go to Africa and shoot it you know yeah, or or in Mexico and and I've always admired that and this is the first film that I've ever done that was outside of Los Angeles outside of the city totally on location where we had to totally um, build you know two towns. A, a big town, Rosewood, which is a predominantly black town, and a small white town, Sumner. And it took so much out of me. I mean, it just like, you know, it, it seems like everything that I that had been doing up to this point had been the culmination of this, this motion picture. Had everything you've done prepared you for this prepared motion picture? Me, yes. And, and, and you said to me as you sat down, you want to talk about American films because, yes. because what? I think that um, we've gotten away from what has truly made America special in the terms of a cinema. Um, and I think the only thing that is truly American about, about film right now at this point is the, the sense of the spectacle. We've always been about the spectacle, you know, about the event. But the heart is not there. I mean, it's, there's like, there's, you know, there's a, a few, you know, tried and true films, you know, small. But on the whole, it's, it's not like it even was, you know, in the old studio system when, you know, where you had like, you know, Treasure of the Sierra Madre, you know, or, or, or the films like The Searchers, you know. I mean, you don't have this, like, there's not a com combination of the spectacle and the heart, you know. I think, you know, they have one, but the other is very much lacking. And I've always approached motion pictures from a standpoint, and maybe I've been naive, um, that I, I'm trying to make films that, that that will inspire me to make more films, you know. So I'm not just I'm not walking through the work. I'm trying to make films that I can be that I'm very passionate about. That hopefully in in creating these pictures, I can inspire other people to be passionate about my work, 
you see? Mm. So, you and, also, and, 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 and it's very hard in a business where that is not the norm. It's like, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, I feel like um, sometimes um, very much a, an anomaly. Who do you admire today who's working as a director? Um, you, you mentioned, you saw an interview I did with Billy Bob Thornton. I'm a, I admire Billy Bob, I think. Because uh, he does what you, he went and told a story that he knew. That's special to him. Special to you him know, in his area with, of the country. Yeah, with no pomp and everything. Rural America. Just, yes, and it, it's, it's, very, it's, it's something very specific and it's something, you know, um, very different. But it, it's, it's very American, you know, or Fargo, you know, Joel Cohen. I'm, um, I like, you know, it, I just really think that if we're going to get anywhere going into this next century, we, we have to, of course, you know, we have to feed the machine and we have to keep the, the engines rolling and everything because, you know, if, if the studios didn't make money, then... Tell me the story and how you came on the story so that America will know what you're talking about. I mentioned it briefly in my introduction. Well, I first heard of Rosewood by reading an uh, Esquire article, and um, I had no intentions of, of making a motion picture out of it until I got a call from John Peters, um, who I had known um, as the head of uh, Sony Pictures. Right. And he, he flew me down to Florida, and I met the people who, the survivors, four of the survivors. Uh, their names were Wilson Hall, Arnett Goins, uh, Willie Evans and many, a woman named Minnie Lee Langley, and they, you know, sitting there talking to them, you know, these people were all in their in, in their mid 80s, mm -hmm. and they told me of, of Rosewood and how they lived in this prosperous town, and it was predominantly black. It wasn't all black, but it was predominantly black, and how their lives were kind of like, um, if not angelic, they they, but pretty much well to do. You know, I mean mm -hmm. they. They didn't really want for anything. They had a good thing. They had a good thing going on. And how this town was um, better off than the neighboring town. Rosewood was kind of like, um, you know, it, it, it was a town that's brought it up out of, out of the earth. Whereas the other town was a company town. It was Sumner. And the people of Sumner really uh, all worked in the lumber business or turpentine. And, um, it was a company town, and the people, the company owned the, the houses and, and, the, and, the, um, and the land and the store. And how this economic tension between the black town and the white town added to the racial tension that was already there during Jim Crow, uh, Jim Crow uh, South. And, you know, this woman, Minnie Lee Langley, specifically her testimony her, her, and, and um, her, her, um, my talk with her really hit me at home because... You know, although she was in her mid-80s, it seemed like, you know, this had happened to her when she was nine years old. It, it, it still welled within her. Every time she would talk about it, it was as, as, it was as if she, it was happening again. You know, and I had the effect of... The experience was right beneath the surface for yes, her. Yes, it was, it was right there, you know, for me. And it, I had the effect of, you know, here she is in her 80s, and here I was, you know, you know 28. And I'm thinking she's transferring that information to me. And... I felt like in a responsibility to try to make sure that the story would go further and as many people as possible would hear it. All right. I just want you to look at one clip. This is when the sheriff urges Sylvester um, and his family leave town for a while because the whites from Sumner yes. were coming after them. Anything else we need to say about this? Uh, it's uh, with the actors are Michael Rooker and, and Don Cheadle. And Don Cheadle. All right. Roll tape. Here it is. Rosewood. John Singleton. Won't you be a good boy and go visit some of your other relatives for a little while, huh? I am trying to help you here. You said to me as we were watching this, a powerful actor. Powerful actor. He's got what, a voice, you said? He's got the voice, he's got the presence, you know, he's got the... Command. Command, you know, you watch him, and he's interesting to look at, too. Yeah. When you were there, what did this do for you? I mean, what did this... Other than thinking of yourself as a filmmaker and thinking that you ought to, you, somebody, as you say, told you that <laughs> you were born to do this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Destined. one of the relatives. Right. Yeah. What were you saying? Well, at the time, I was, uh, I was uh, you know, knee deep in the water and everything. I mean, there were many times I just wanted to quit. I didn't want to be a part of quit. it anymore. 
well, I couldn't quit. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, but you in wanted the process, to. but it because it, it was so, it was so, um, took so much emotion out of me, you know, with the you know hanging bodies up on the, on the trees and and um and dealing and, and and trying to be distant from the fact that I'm I'm um, guiding these people, you know, because we didn't show like the real racist part in it, guiding these people to be true true crackers, you know what I mean, in the lynch mob. Um, I had to be emotionally close to the material and at the same time distant from it so that I can do what, what was needed technically as a director. And it was a give and take, you know? It, it was something that um, I never really had to go through in, in, in making a p film before. How could it have stayed silent for so long? I mean, I first became aware, as I told you, with a 60 Minutes, 60 minutes piece by Bradley. Yes. Um, well, the the people, the people that that had happened to, they really didn't talk a, about it very much um, um, amongst amongst uh, their family members. There was one man, I think it was Arnett Goins. I'm not too sure, but he didn't mention it to his wife till for at least 35 to 40 years. And um, I think there was a, a tremendous amount of shame amongst the people who, um, who survived Rosewood because they felt like. You know, if this, if this happened to them then, it could happen to them again. You know, it, 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 I don't, it happens to some people who are victims. On the part of the people who, who, who did this, this deed, they denied it just out of straight denial, that the fact that they could ever do that in their lives. And a lot of people who took part in this incident, um, in the mob, it was um, known to, they were known to have gone crazy. I mean, mentally insane. Just dealing with what they'd done? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, there's been several studies on it, you know, throughout the years of, of mob violence, of, of what it is when a group of people get really riled up and they go and, 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 and they say that their actions were dictated by the frenzy of the group. They, they made no individual thought. And um, one thing that we try to do in the, in, in the, in the film is, is show that, you know, the hero... You know the, the classic struggle in, you know, in, in, of mankind is that individual versus the group. You know, but the but the individual, in a certain time in any society, has to triumph against the norms or the laws of society. You know, to do what is right. There's always that give and take, and that's what we show in this picture. Set this scene up. The women and children rush through the woods to board the train. That man uh, and John Wright, played by John Voight, and man played by um, by Ving Rhames. They've arranged to pick them up and take them to safety. What else should we say? This will give you some sense of the... Oh, well, you set it up as, as well, well as, as I could. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Roll tape. Here it is. Rosewood. Sweet Jesus, Lord. Won't you get me now? You said to me it's scary. Very scary. To think it could happen here. Yes. And, and this was a way of life. This, I mean, Rosewood, Rosewood was a, a very special case, but there are hundreds of Rosewood throughout, Amer throughout American history. Dozens of stories like this. I mean, Reconstruction was um, a time where a lot, there was a huge migration from the south to the north and to the west. You had segregation, so black people had to form their own townships in different parts of the United States. And several times whenever those towns were economically more viable than the neighboring white towns they were destroyed by angry whites Tupac know. Shakur your Tupac. friend yeah Pac. Tupac I mean yeah. uh, tell me I mean it must have knocked you for a well not it didn't knock me for a loop um, I mean and I can say this because you know I, I knew you know Pac it, it, it seemed to be expected but I didn't know when it would happen. Just knew somehow it was going to come down like this. It was, it was a road. It was a road. It was a road that was inevitable. And it's hard to say inevitable, but you know, it just seemed inevitable. It's it's, it's it saddens me, but it's like, you know, you can't save people from themselves. Yeah, I know what you mean. Even if you're the, their friend, I mean, it's as hard Nothing as you, it could, is. you could tell him a thousand times that this road is going to where it ended. You can't. You can't. Yeah. You are an example of a very successful young black man. 
mm -hmm. heralded for your talent and success in a range of spectrum of publications. Too many young black men like you are caught up in the judicial system in America. True. Huge numbers, mm -hmm. more than 50%, I think, in certain age groups. True. How do you think we turn that around, and what's the role of the filmmaker? Well, I mean, this is very difficult for me in the sense that, you know, I've been trying to divide the whole thing of me as a filmmaker with, you know, with all the other things, because inevitably, you know, no, you know, you have the whole thing of the social, social questions and stuff. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to be a, become a social activist or answer the questions of society. But all I can say is that hopefully, you know, people can look at me and, and I can talk and everything and say how I navigated the waters. I don't have a criminal record. Um, not to say that I've never been in a position where I could have gotten a criminal record in, in one time in my life. Um, but I, I've, it's been a matter of luck, and it's been a matter of, of, de, of the, making me making the right decisions at the right times in my life. I mean, a person can do something at the age of 12 and 13 that can alter their lives inevitably, irrevocably, for the rest of their lives, you know, just one little thing. And, um, you know, I think that there's not enough people that, that there's not enough of that is being, being talked about. Not, on, not you know, not only in the cinema, but in television and everything, and um, I think that the country kind of fosters a self-perpetuating prophecy when it comes to black men in America, that uh, our inevitable our inevitable path is to go to jail, or to, or to be or to be murdered, you know, or you know, or to die in some in some type of way. That's why um, you know. Pac in his life, he never, you know, he never expected to, to reach the age of 30. And there came a point in his life where he, you know, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't say that he didn't want to because I, I, I wouldn't believe that he did not want to, but I think he kind of gave up in a way. He didn't expect to, so, you know, he would do whatever he, he wanted to do. It gave him a sense of freedom, you know. Um, and I think a lot of people, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't really make blanket statements, but I don't. I want to really be careful in that. But I think a lot of people have that mentality, whereas um, they've been people have been battered down so much in terms of hope um, for any type of future from an early age that they just throw their hands up and say, you know, eff it. Yeah. I'm going to do this, and this is where it's going to be. It doesn't really matter, so I might as well go do whatever. It's you know, it's going to be a wild ride. You know, and not all of them are famous either. Yeah. You know? The movie is Rosewood, John Singleton, um, a tragic story in American history, mm -hmm. uh, told well by John Singleton. Thank you. All right. Good to be here Good again. To see you. All right. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>